Hello and welcome to space. Now, 2014 has been the most extraordinary year in our solar system. We managed to land on a comet. We've got new astronauts going up into space. We've got all kinds of missions being planned. So where are we going? What's the future for the space sector in Europe? We're going to find out, but first some more news from the universe this month. NASA's New Horizons spacecraft has just woken up from hibernation, ready to be the first ever probe to visit the dwarf planet Pluto. It arrives in July 2015. The Japanese Space Agency's Hayabusa 2 mission has launched towards an asteroid. It will bring back samples to Earth and land probes on the surface, including a German-built robot that can hop itself along. And the European Southern Observatory has confirmed funding for the 1 billion euro European Extremely Large Telescope in Chile. It means major industrial construction can now begin. The decisions taken in the last few days will have an impact on what happens in the space sector over the next 10, 20, 30 or even 50 years. So let's see what's planned. Space can be awe-inspiring. These time-lapse images of Earth by German astronaut Alexander Guest give a breathtaking view of our planet from above. What I liked most was what Alexander Guest has done because I thought that he conveyed in a very nice way what Earth looks like from space. And I think he's captured many young people's minds and those who are young at heart. And I think what he's done has been good for space research in Germany. Space can also be very human. When Philae touched down, we shared the emotion. Wow, where to start? I mean, we landed on a comet. <laughs> <laughs> Who knew? Um, ew, that's pretty inspiring. That really is pretty inspiring. But space is also about politics and money. So it's back down to Earth and to the city of Luxembourg as it gets ready for Christmas. Nearby, the merry-go-round of European space politics is turning too, with ministers from ESA's 20 member states arriving to talk rockets, missions and hard cash. One of the themes today is to balance the different contributions of the different countries, especially France, Italy and Germany. Much of the horse trading happened before the meeting, with the detail of ESA's 3.3 billion euro annual budget discussed and defined. Then, in Luxembourg, the final details are hammered out. Success at these kinds of meetings can often be about making the right kind of contact, according to the UK's space minister. Well, the stakes are pretty high, and there really is no substitute uh, for eyeballing people, getting to know them, and you know, establishing an agreement that way. A lot of the talk was about launches. After all, if you want to go to space, you need a rocket. Europe's market-leading Ariane 5 is now seen as expensive and likely to lose market share to America's cheaper new competitor, SpaceX. ESA's answer is a brand new launcher called Ariane 6, which received 3 billion euros in financing. La première, uh... The main good news for Europe is that we've decided to launch Ariane 6, which should have its first flight in 2020. A new rocket, a competitive launcher, modular, which won't need public money to support its operations. This is what the new Ariane 6 looks like. It comes with either two or four boosters and with a price per launch ranging from 70 to 115 million euros, much less than 160 million it costs to launch Ariane 5. Das gibt uns sehr viel mehr Flexibilität. It gives us more flexibility and makes us more competitive because we Europeans want to keep our own access to space and are in competition with the US, China, Russia, India. There's a big spectrum of competitors, but we want to stay in the game to say that we build a good launcher that brings satellites to space. We want to say that we build a good launcher that brings satellites to space. We want to say that we build a good launcher that brings so where will we go? Well, Mars is a top destination. The ExoMars mission, led by Italy and the UK, launches an orbiter and small probe in 2016, and then the large ExoMars rover in 2018. 
ESA secured the 160 million euros it needs for the project, the first to look for evidence of life on Mars. The uniqueness of ExoMars is that it will be able to uh, drill down and look for um, you know, historic signs of life on Mars. And we haven't had that before. You know, every time we have one of these missions, it is a new thing. You know, it's following on the, on the, on the tails of Rosetta. And, and that's the exciting thing about these scientific missions. You don't know what you're going to find. In a certain sense, it's the logical continuation of Philae on the comet. We think it's very interesting to go to see what's under the Martian surface, because the analysis that's been done on the surface shows that there's no life on Mars, and it's obvious because radiation and cosmic rays have surely destroyed any form of life over the millions of years. On the other hand, it's possible that something has been saved deep down. The future for mankind in space is less clear. Europe sends two new astronauts to space next year, but the ISS itself will probably be decommissioned at the end of the 2020s if it doesn't get more support. For us, ISS is a perfect infrastructure for research in the low Earth orbit. And we need that. We need that for human physiology, physiology. We need it for biology, we need it also for material science, and now also for Earth observation and basic science, like for instance antimatter and all these questions. While astronauts do have an important role in exploration, many in Europe show strong support for robotic missions like Rosetta. These days, what impresses me the most is what robots can do. We can just about go everywhere with them. They can do things faster, better and a lot cheaper than manned exploration. The science missions are something all ESA members have to fund, but most governments buy into space because it's good business. Not only does it create jobs, but also services we now consider essential, such as satellite television, navigation and Earth observation. Beyond the dream that space offers to everyone, there are the real tangible things of scientific research in this sector that are fundamental for the future development of our countries as well. It's good for the economy, but it's also good for the feeling of belonging. The earthlings are working together. And I think that these days having projects that create solidarity and fraternity raises the level of debate. The decisions on how to finance and manage space in Europe are taken based on hard economic argument. But the results, once in orbit, can also be beautiful to behold. Next month in space, we're with the experts who are trying to answer the trickiest questions in science. What is dark energy and what is dark matter? We'll see you then.